Hello, and welcome to, well, I think this is episode 14. I switched to a new machine, and uh, therefore I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I can't check YouTube and see. So for the past couple of episodes, we've been creating this star map, and that's what we're going to keep creating today. Um, now, I'm having a problem uh, with the star map lagging a little bit, and I tried a, a couple of things to see what it was. Um, it's definitely the GUI calls, but I think it may actually be because this new machine isn't entirely updated yet in terms of uh, graphic card drivers um, because I can't imagine why uh, this would actually cause a significant amount of slowdown. Uh, I tried deleting all of the flare objects and replacing them with just images. That didn't seem to help any. So uh, for now I'm just going to let it be like that because this looks a whole lot better than the images I came up with. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Well, anyhow, what we're going to do this time is we're going to make it so that the player ship appears in this overworld view and can drive around. So the first thing we've got to do in order to do that is to put the player ship out in this particular section. But you may notice that we don't have a prefab for the player ship. Now, the reason for that was that when we were developing the player, we had a couple of prefabs inside of the player ship, and you can't stack prefabs. So if we go back into the garden here, uh, you can see that our player ship is not a prefabricated object, but it has two prefabricated objects within it. The reason that I didn't make it a prefab is because uh, these two objects have then become desynced with their prefabs, um, which is a big downside of using prefabs in Unity. But for now, we'll go ahead and accept that loss, and there we are. There's a player ship. We'll call this player ship. Um, that'll become extremely annoying later on, uh, so we're actually going to be building our ships out of prefabs rather than ships as prefabs, but that'll be a little bit of time before we get that far. So let's go back into the navigation system. And it appears that someone in the building is just repeatedly slamming the door. I'm not sure if you can hear that or not. Hopefully not. Uh, so now that we're back here, we can go into prefabs and we can pull the player ship over. Uh, now the player ship does have a, uh, a camera control element to it. And you can see that we've got a camera for ship cam. Uh, we're actually going to cheat uh, by tying everything into this ship cam variable. And if ship cam isn't set, then the ship controls don't take. So let's go ahead and open up ship controls. Here we are. So we just say if ship cam equals null and return. And that way we won't accidentally uh, uh, screw up our main camera with the ship cam for the ship. Uh, so if we go over to the ship, we can see it's over here. No, that's a star map. There it is. So the question is, uh, uh, how do we get the ship to control You know, when we're not uh, when we're not controlling it uh, ourselves, and we're actually going to go ahead and create a nav control system. So here in the ship, we're going to have another kind of ship control, which we're going to call a ship nav control. The ship nav control is going to have a public star uh, star. And this will be the destination or location of the ship nav, of the ship. So you tie this into a ship. So here in the player ship, we'll go ahead and add a ship nav control. We'll go ahead and add a ship nav control. Uh, and it, see how it's currently in a star of none. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that uh, when we have our uh, galaxy controls, we're going to have to have public ship, uh, or rather ship nav control player ship, like this. And then when we assign our target star here, we're going to assign it to the ship as well. Like so. Uh, and I still haven't gotten used to this new computer, if you've noticed me scrambling around awkwardly. There we go. There we go. 
So once we have this target star and it's been set, uh, we actually are going to be doing a, uh, a trick which you should be familiar with. And the reason is because we want to be able to uh, pop there if it's the first time it's set, or glide there otherwise. So we say if target star equals null, then uh, uh, transform dot position equals target star dot position. Not target star transform dot position. Like so. So that means it will just instantly pop there if we weren't, uh, and otherwise we will uh, take our time. So we'll go down into update, and we're going to go ahead and, uh, oh, this is in, I'm just being an idiot. <sighs> ah, jeez, I'm sorry. All right, so this should in fact put our ship wherever the first star is. And you can see that there we are. It's a player ship at Alum Will Not. But it didn't actually glide us over to the next location. For that, we're going to need to have this system here understand understand how to set us there. So we're going to go ahead and say uh, vector3 uh, delta equals transform dot position equals uh, star dot position dot transform dot position minus transform dot position. We're actually going to say if star equals null return. So we've got this delta and uh, what we need to do is we need to uh, normalize it, and then we need to send it up to the ship so that the ship understands what to do with it. Unfortunately, I don't believe that the ship actually has any concept of moving on its own. Um, however, it does have a couple of things related to this. Uh, for example, it has a throttle and a couple of other details. Um, so here we go. This is what we're looking for. So the ship does in fact throttle towards wherever it's pointed, and I had forgotten that. So that's exactly what we wanted. When I said it had no concept of blah 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 blah, that's because I haven't worked on this in a week. Uh, it does have a concept. I built that concept in. All we need to do is make sure that the ship actually faces that direction. So we're going to go ahead and say um, ship dot rotation. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. We need to actually declare that, don't we? Boilerplate, boilerplate. Ship dot transform. Actually, we can use. After all that, we don't actually need to use it there. We do need to use it eventually. Uh, transform dot uh, rotation equals quaternion dot lerp. I love my lerping. Uh, and then we do from and to, so uh, transform.rotation, quaternion.lookrotation uh, with our destination of the delta, uh, and then time.delta time uh, times ship.turn rate. Uh, ship turn. what's it called? Rot speed. That's an opaque name for it, okay. All right, so now we have it turned in that direction, but we need to actually say here, if delta is greater than 0. Point, uh, if delta is less than 0.1f, then ship.throttle equals zero. 
if delta is uh, else if delta is greater than five ship dot throttle equals one else ship dot throttle equals 0 0.2 0 0.3 there we are and that should give us uh, the ability to stop moving forward to stop moving forward when we reach the destination star. So here you can see us kind of hovering on that one ship, cog hog. Let's go over to Agnim. Oh, that's because we don't actually change the destination star. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and just add a light. It's um, hard to see. <laughs> All right, so, although obviously in a realistic game there wouldn't be any lights, and you'd have like running lights on the ship or something, which we may do. That could be cool. Uh, so here we are in the ship, and we need to actually make it so that when the target star changes, we change it for the ship as well. So we're going to actually go, then, go ahead and the thing I deleted earlier, we're going to go ahead and actually do it. Voila. And that means that we don't actually have to do this part, because this is already taken care of. There we are. Let's go ahead and see how that looks. And do we have any errors? No. All right, so we can see the player ship, and let's go ahead and cruise over to some place, like uh, Volnadar. Oh, we've got uh, one that's if they are exactly the same name, they should have different... Hold on, I'm going to check something else while we're... While we're waiting for that to come on back. Um, these two should have different cluster numbers. They're the same name. I must have broken the cluster number. Uh, how annoying. Um, so I shouldn't have control. So I'm going to say ship throttle equals 0 0.1, and then up here we're going to make it 0.3. Um, there is a part of the star system which actually checks to see whether or not there are any other stars with the same name, and if so, it counts up um, so that we can get alpha, beta, gamma, red, and having stars that actually have the same name. But it doesn't appear to be working at the moment. Uh, probably because this is busted somehow. I'm not sure exactly how. I, I've, I've changed things around a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and see whether or not we can get someplace now. The high throttle values are great for moving forward, but then you can't turn, so which means we overshot our destination. So here you can see us burning the midnight oil towards Hanag. Of course, our ship is radically oversized, and we still have that giant bracket around it that says player ship, but that's all fine. Uh, for a, an introductory episode, you know, going back into this episode, uh, content creation stuff, this will work okay. Uh, now, if you're not happy with the speed at which the ship travels, you can obviously change that up. Uh, just before we finish off here, I'm actually going to do just that. Um, Got to get more used to this computer. So over here in ship nav control, I'm going to change this to 0.5 because you, as you might remember, speed is a function of the ship's throttle squared. Uh, so a low value is really, really low. All right, go over to Brynmerg. By the way, you may have noticed that I changed the name generation system. Perfect. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is better or worse yet. Bag scar. 
So in the next episode, what we'll do is we will have it so that when you arrive at a star, you go inside and you fight a little bit of a battle against that test ship, and then you leave. Um, and that's going to work by having the player ship not delete itself as you move between uh, place to place. So uh, that means that you're going to have the same ship object whether you're here in galaxy view or whether you're in battle view. Uh, so the ship has the same number of particle effects and the same geometry and all that stuff. Uh, now if there are other ships that aren't yours, we'll probably abstract them out to little dots or something that would get labeled. Um, but the player ship itself is kind of fun to have it right here in Galaxy View, so we may keep it like that forever. We're certainly going to keep it that for now. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode um, and me pounding on my new computer and trying to get it fixed. I'm going to go see whether or not I can get a new driver because this is a little bit dodgy. Um, on my old machine, recording didn't damage the frame rate so much, and I also didn't have the same damaged frame rate here in the uh, here in the view. So there's something screwy going on, and I guess I will work on that while this is turned off. <laughs>